So Israel was chosen from the womb to serve God's universal purpose. Israel suffered unobserved by others, but eventually this would make possible the recognition of God by those others. Where once God covenanted with David to lead his people Israel, he now covenants with Israel to lead the nations of the world in God's way. It's an expansion of God's purpose. And this is an idea that appears in Isaiah 55, verses 3 to 5. Incline your ear and come to me. Hearken, and you shall be revived. And I will make with you an everlasting covenant, the enduring loyalty promised to David. Right? The covenant and loyalty that was promised to David, I'm now transferring to you. As I made him a leader of peoples, a prince and commander of peoples, so you shall summon a nation who you did not know, and a nation that did not know you shall come running to you for the sake of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel who has glorified you. So God makes an eternal covenant with Israel like that he once concluded with David. And the function of the institutions of the old order are transferred to the nation as a whole. What kings and priests and prophets did for Israel, Israel will now do for the whole world. As the mediator between the only God and the nations of the world, she is a light unto them. And all will ascend to her because from her will come Torah, instruction in the divine will, and salvation. This is the idea of universal mission that comes out of 2nd Isaiah. When we come back, we're going to take a look at what I think is probably the single most profound book in the Hebrew Bible, the book of Job.